Hello and welcome to this lecture. Uh, today we are going to discuss important types of edema and we classify them into four types. One is renal edema, second one is cardiac edema, third is pulmonary edema, fourth is cerebral edema. And the examples in renal edema are nephrotic syndrome or nephrotic syndrome or acute tubular injury. In nephrotic syndrome, it is uh, persistent heavy protein urea or albumin urea in nephrotic syndrome as we discussed in our previous lectures as well that there will be increase of the loss of the protein from the urine. So we mentioned them protein urea or albumin urea as albumin is also a protein. As a result, hypoalbuminemia causing decrease of the plasma on cortic pressure and result in severe generalized edema. Then we have nephritic syndrome, which is the edema occurring in condition which diffuse glomerular disease such as acute diffuse glomerulonephritis and rapid progressive glomerulonephritis and if we call it nephritic syndrome where there will be excessive reabsorption of sodium and water in the renal tubules via renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism as we discussed before that renin angiotensin and aldosterone is a system and then in angiotensin and aldosterone uh, is responsible for maintaining the uh, blood flow in the kidney and it is responsible for maintaining the blood pressure so if there is an increase of the aldosterone through renin angiotensin pathway then it will lead to an increase of the absorption of sodium and water in the renal tubules and actually this is a reason in nephritic syndrome that it occurs because of the glomerulonephritis a uh, rapid progressive glomerulonephritis that leads to an increase of the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism what is glomerulonephritis and rapid progressive glomerulonephritis both diseases uh, Acute diffusive glomerulonephritis and rapid progressive glomerulonephritis are actually the disease that damage the kidney, especially the glomerulus. And why it occurred? Because it could be because of the autoimmune disorder or because of the infection. And that result in uh, decreased excretion of the sodium and increased retention of the sodium and we will discuss detail in our upcoming lectures then we have acute tubular injury uh, because of the shock uh, or because of the toxics or chemical death result in gross edema of the body why this disease occur it could be occur because of the nephrotoxic drugs such as cyclosporin aminoglycoside antibiotics cisplastin Amphotericin B, beta lactam antibiotics, uh, they are nephrotoxic drugs, so they can damage uh, the renal tubules and can cause uh, acute tubular injury. Then we have cardiac edema, and it could be occur in uh, various ways, such as in congestive heart failure, and uh, there will be decrease of the cardiac output that result in hypovolemia and the hypovolemia result in decrease in glomerular filtration rate and then there will be retention of the sodium and water level so this is one mechanism the other mechanism it could be possible through anti-diuretic hormone because of the decrease of the cardiac output uh, the increase of the anti-diuretic hormone also responsible for retention of the sodium and water or uh, the third mechanism it could be because of the extra renal mechanism which is renin angiotensin uh, aldosterone mechanism uh, that occur because of the decrease of the cardiac output the other reasons for cardiac edema are uh, the chronic hypoxia 
and that chronic hypoxia result in increase of the capillary permeability and then it leads to the cardiac edema or it could be occur because of the increase of the venous pressure central venous pressure that increase the hydrostatic pressure and that pressure result in cardiac edema so you can see that either it could be occur through the increased capillary hydrostatic pressure because of the central venous pressure because of the rise of the central venous pressure or it could be occur because of the uh, increased capillary permeability because of the chronic hypoxia and we term both of the hypotheses as as back pressure and forward pressure we will discuss these uh, in detail in our uh, separate topics but if you see the main uh, mechanisms main is through decrease of the cardiac output this is a main journal reason that is responsible for three other reasons like uh, hypovolemia extra renal mechanism or anti diuretic hormone that result in sodium and water retention or it could be occur through the increase of the capillary hydrostatic pressure because of the increase of the central venous pressure or it could be occur because of the capillary permeability that's because of the chronic hypoxia then we have pulmonary edema and in pulmonary edema there will be increase of the pulmonary hydrostatic pressure increased vascular permeability and usually this occur because of the acute high altitude and that result in uh, circulatory issues respiratory ill effects and anoxic effects and what is anoxic anoxic mean the decrease of the oxygen level so decrease of the oxygen level or decrease of the circulatory effects why because if somebody want to climb the mountain on high altitude then usually this pulmonary edema occur so what happening uh, in pulmonary edema this is a normal mechanism action where the hydrostatic pressure is 10 uh, mm of hg and oncotic pressure is 25 mm of hg uh, you can see this is a arteriolar end this is a venular end and this is the alveolus and there is no edema in normal circumstances and what happen if uh, there is an increase of the hydrostatic pressure and then it result will in the interstitial edema as you see this section and then it result at then in the alveolar edema or because of the other reason because of the interstitial edema increase uh, capillary permeability and that increase capillary permeability can be expressed in these gaps or spacing and that result in interstitial edema and then alveolar edema so the pulmonary edema either could be occur through Uh, the increase of the hydrostatic pressure or it could be occur because of the increased capillary permeability then the last is the cerebral edema uh, which is uh, known as swelling of the brain and most life threatening edema and it uh, could be occur because of the vasogenic edema it could be classified as vasogenic edema cytotoxic edema interstitial edema so what happen in vascogenic edema uh, there will be an increase of the vascular permeability uh, in the brain uh, in the blood brain barrier and you can see this is a normal structure with tight junction and that contain astrocyte feet with the increase of the vascular permeability uh, especially the blood brain barrier uh, then escape of the plasma filtrate into the intercellular spaces and because it move to the intracellular spaces the endothelial cells become swollen and then uh, it leads to the swelling so actually in vasogenic edema uh, we can define as extracellular accumulation of the fluid uh, resulting from the disruption of the blood brain barrier or it could be what um, and what is the cause of the vasogenic uh, edema in the brain it could be occur because of the increase of the permeability of the blood brain barrier uh, accumulation of the extra fluid increases uh, the brain volume and then intracranial pressure uh, causing the symptoms of cerebral edema then we have interstitial edema then we have interstitial cerebral edema and it occur usually around the perivascular spaces 
um, around the ventricles near ependymal space and and why this occur uh, it occur because of hydrocephalus which is a condition in which excess cerebrospinal fluid uh, build up within the ventricles uh, of the brain and then may increase the pressure within the head so there is an increase of the pressure in around the ventricles near the perivascular space around ependymal this section and because of the fluid such as cerebrospinal fluid build up here that increase the pressure and that result in interstitial cerebral edema then we have hepatic edema which could be occur because of the chronic liver disease or edemas uh, of the legs or ascites in the cirrhosis of the liver then we have nutritional edema uh, which occur because of the nutritional deficiencies of protein uh, vitamins and chronic alcoholism and we know that protein uh, are play an important role in maintaining the uh, pressures especially on cortic pressure so if there is a decrease of the protein level in the body then it leads to the nutritional edema so the vitamin loss or loss of protein or chronic alcoholism where uh, the hepatic cell will be damaged can lead to nutritional edema and why this occur i mentioned that because of the hypoproteinemia low level of protein level in the blood and sodium water retention uh, because of the metabolic disorders this is a picture of beriberi disease then we has uh, kawashoriker syndrome having scaly skin disintended abdominals and swollen ankles then next one is myxoedema which is uh, occur because of the hypothyroidism and it is a form of non pitting edema that occur on the skin uh, of face and other body parts uh, in the internal organs because of the excessive deposition of glycosamine glycanes in the interstitium and what is glycosamine actually glycosamine is a polysaccharide that provide extra cellular matrix why myxoedema occur in hypothyroidism it was thought to be happen because of the uh, activation of human skin fibroblast that is responsible for the production of uh, glycosamine glycan and recent studies found that uh, the deficiency of thyroid hormone uh, may trigger the fibroblast to synthesize glycosamine glycan so thank you so much for today's lecture hope to see you again